Hi, how are you? Today is Friday, is uh, first week, end of the week of the first Global Read Aloud 2020. Um, and I'm here to answer to your questions. This week is all about Alma uh, y como obtuvo su nombre, and Alma and how she got her names. And I have my list of questions, so thank you. First of all, thank you. Thank you for being part of the Global Read Aloud. Thank you for reading Alma. Thank you for participating. And thank you so much for uh, um, sending your questions too. So since we haven't met before, I thought I would, I sorted the questions uh, so we talk about different things, but in essence, will be about Alma. So the first question I got is, what is your favorite food? And I have to say, it is Peruvian food. I love quinoa. I love guayuquito. I love ruca. I love pan con chicharron. I love a lot of Peruvian food. And I don't get to eat it as much, but I love Peruvian food. If you get a chance to have, go to a Peruvian restaurant, I would say go. It's very good. Uh, second question, what type of person are you? And I would say I am a very quiet person. I like observing a lot. Um... And I'm always afraid of make to make a mistake. So maybe that's why I'm quiet, because I'm, I get very nervous very easily. And it's okay if you're like that. It's perfectly fine. Uh, next question, what is your favorite book? Uh, on this one, Growing Up, The Little Prince. And the other favorite that I still love and still read is this comic strip called Mafalda from Kino, who's a, um, he just passed, but Kino it was from Argentina, and he wrote this comic strip of Mafalda, this little girl that was very opinionated and very um, determined to make things right in the world for everyone. And that was Mafalda. <laughs> um, those were from um, Carol Stream School, from this uh, old, now I have some questions from Forsyth Country Days going in North Carolina. It says, what was it like growing up in another country? And I can tell you that it was exactly the same as it is growing up here. In other words, to me, my experience, it was just like growing up here. I was a child, I had my friends, I went to school, I had my neighborhood, I played with the friends in my, around the, my neighbors around in, down the block, we went biking, we will get together almost every weekend during school days um, so we can play for a little bit and it was just fun just like you and i we were just in another part of the world but it's exactly the same do you have any kids and i said yes i have three i have two teenage boys one in 16 the other one in 15 and i have a girl who is in second grade now she's seven uh, are you married yes i am for 19 years um, next question is, what inspired your passion to illustrate and write? And um, There's nothing else I would rather do. Uh, it's what keeps me going. It keeps me interested. It's also something that I carry from the family because my father was an, a painter. My grandfather was a painter. And then I have some family members who were, who also... Uh, a parent who relatives who also wrote so it's something that was that was like runs in the family so it's it came very um it was easier to pick those two things because i had him at my home i saw writing and i saw painting every day so i just it felt very natural but at the same time it was my choice to decide to do that and i love doing it again there's nothing else i would rather do uh, how long does it take to make a book? And I say a lot of time. I think that if you're talking about a picture book, I would say no less than two years. Um, and there's a lot of waiting also, waiting for things to happen. Um, but I would say no less than two years. So by the time you hold a new picture book in your hand, somebody has been a lot of people have been working on it for at least two years of their life. So I love those, I love those picture books. Um, let's see, next question. What inspired you to write Alma? And I ask you to please check 
the note that I wrote on the back of the book. It's right here. I'm going to show you this one right here. Note, the note in the corner. Read it because I explain in such, in a lot of detail, I explain why I wrote Alma, why I made Alma. Um, <laughs> will you write more books about your life? I hope so. And I think that every book that I make in some way is related to my life. Otherwise, I can't work on it. I have to feel like I connect in a certain level, um, deep level, um, to take the project. So, but I hope to write more books about who I am and um, what my life is like or was like. What's your favorite book that you ever made? I cannot pick one because it's very difficult. I love all the age book for something else. It was the, at that moment it was really great and, and I love making the book and I still love every single book for different reasons. I do have to say that Alma is very, very special to me though. Um, how many stories have you made that I wrote and illustrated? Alma is number one. It's the first one. It's my debut picture book. That means it's the first book that I wrote and illustrated. And then next year, early next year, we'll have Sonia, my next book that is coming out, La Selva de Sonia or Sonia's Rainforest. Why did you choose Alma as your main character? I picked the name Alma for the significance of the actual word Alma. Alma means soul in Spanish, and I thought it was a beautiful name to use as her name, being her the, the main character in the story. Um, why did you choose to write the story with your family as characters? And I think it was a way, in some way, it was a way to honor my family. I grew up listening to all these family stories, but putting them in a book, it was a way, it was my gift to the family. And all these stories that were, you know, shared in the, you know, in the family. Um, let's see, why are the illustrations in Ama drawn in black? white and shades of red. So, as I was telling you, this book is, what I wanted to do is I wanted the book to feel almost like a photo album. And if you look at old photo albums, maybe you have some around the house, photo albums have pictures and the pictures are, you know, from before we had color pictures. Like most of my photo albums from my family, were in black and white or sepia tones. So I wanted to remind, remem, in some way, um, remind you of photo albums. When you looked at the book, you felt like you were looking at a photo album. So that was the reason. And then the, the, if you look at the book, there are shades of pink, and there are some shades of pink, and there are some shades of blue, right here, right here, and then album. And everything that is blue is from an relative that was hand down, you see, from a relative. And everything that is pink, you will see it more in this spread right here. Everything that is pink is Alma's. It's owned by Alma. And one day, one day, it will be handed out to some, some hand down to someone else. So everything that is blue is from a relative that she got. Everything pink is Alma's. And one day, somebody else in the family will have. Uh, which is your favorite part of the Alma book? I cannot pick one part, but I love this illustration. I absolutely love this illustration. I think it's very beautiful. After you wrote Alma, how did you feel about the end product? I felt happy because I was done, but at the same time I felt really strange because I had been working on it for so long and then the book, I wasn't working on the book anymore, so it felt really weird. Um, but at the same time I knew that there was a lot of waiting after, the, after I was done with the book and before you were able to see it. And that waiting made me very nervous because I didn't know how, how people will uh, welcome or not the book. 
So it was very, it was very, I was very nervous, very nervous. Is the bird seen in most of the book a special or important bird to Alma? It is a very important book, a bird for Alma. It's a very important bird for the whole story. It's this little bird right here. And I want you to, next time you look at the book, I want you to follow the book, but just look at the bird. As you read the book, just notice what the bird is doing. The bird, to me, is Alma's companion. It's Alma's guide. It's Alma's support. And the bird is there every time she's doubtful. Every time she doesn't know, she's not sure if she likes her name. But when she's sure and she loves her name, the, the bird is no longer there. Because she doesn't need the bird anymore. The bird serves its purpose. There it is again, with the photo album. So the, uh, the bird is a guide to me. It's a guide for Alma. And but the family give their pets long, meaningful names too. I don't know, you tell me. I think, I don't know. I don't know, I really don't know. Maybe, maybe. And the last question is, why do you like your name? I like my name because it's my name. It's who I am. It, it's who, it's, I made my name my own. And uh, just like you will make your name your own. And I think slowly the name grows into you and you grow into your name. And that's what makes you so special. And um, that's the last question for today. I will post on Sunday uh, to get started for next week, uh, which will be Friday. Thank you again for your time. Thank you again for listening. Uh, thank you for reading. I hope you're well. I hope you have a great weekend. Uh, stay safe. Wear your masks. Thank you. Thank you.